Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is supernatural harvesting. After Jesus taught his disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, he was ready to introduce them to a new way of harvesting. He had shown them how he could bring in a supernatural catch of fish. And now he is ready to teach them how to bring in a supernatural harvest. Jesus was not talking about crops. He was talking about a supernatural harvest of people ready to follow him. Listen to these words of Jesus. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are ready and ripe for harvest. John chapter 4 and verse 35. Some translations say, the fields are white for harvest. What does that mean? Wheat comes up green, but as the kernels of wheat mature, they turn light brown, and in the sunlight they have a whitish looking shine on them. Jesus is simply saying, when it comes to growing wheat, it's not hard to tell when it's time to reap the harvest. In contrast to bringing the harvest that farmers plant, Jesus is teaching his disciples that helping people become followers of Jesus does not take as long as planting seeds and waiting for the field to become ready for harvest. Jesus demonstrated that people who do not appear to be anywhere near ready to become followers of Jesus can have their minds changed in an instant. How is this possible? The supernatural anointing that Jesus carried caused people to receive his message immediately. He had just demonstrated this truth to his disciples. A woman who had come to draw water from a well at an unusual time in the middle of the heat of the day is an example of this. She did this because she had been shunned by her community on account of her lifestyle. To her surprise, Jesus spoke to her and invited her to follow him. At first, she was argumentative and resistant to his message. But soon her heart was changed, and she embraced the message that Jesus presented to her. What made the difference? It was the anointing that Jesus carried. She was so dramatically changed that she influenced many people to talk to Jesus who never had any interest in meeting him. Listen to what John says. Many Samaritans from the village, believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. John chapter 4 and verse 39. She was drawn to Jesus because of his compassion and prophetic gift. This was a frequent occurrence in the ministry of Jesus. The demonized man from Gadara is another clear example of a person who had no interest in following Jesus. But because Jesus had the power to cast the demons that were causing him to hurt himself and others, he became a follower of Jesus. The tax collector Zacchaeus is an example of someone who did not expect to have Jesus visit his home on that day that he passed through Jericho, but it happened. Jesus visited with him and Zacchaeus ended up pledging to pay back four times more to anyone who he had cheated out of money. It was the anointing that Jesus carried that changed the mind of these individuals. What is Jesus modeling for us in these stories? Listen again to his words. I say, wake up and look around the fields are already ripe for harvest, John chapter 4 and verse 35. 
I sent you to harvest where you did not plant. John chapter 4 and verse 38. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. We are not asked to pray for more planters. We are invited to pray for more harvesters. We are not called to sow. We are called to reap. Jesus is the one who sows spiritual seeds. Our task is to reap the seeds that Jesus has already sown. Jesus wants us to move from the mentality of a sower to the mentality of a harvester. The planter has to decide if the soil is too dry or too wet to plant. Sowing is back-breaking work. It's hot and it's painful and it's frequently done alone. The mentality of the reaper is completely different from the mentality of the sower. Reaping is done with joy. We have an urgency to bring the harvest in. Frequently, farmers work together to help each other bring their crops in. Jesus wants to take the burden out of reaping by setting us free from the responsibility of sowing. He is the sower. He is so generous with his seeds that he sows seeds on rocky soil, thorny soil, shallow soil, and on hard soil every day. He gives everyone the opportunity to follow him. He plants spiritual thoughts in people's minds every single day. Our job is to check and see who is ready to follow Jesus. We don't do this with our own strength, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. So what is supernatural harvesting? Here are some stories that will help you understand how supernatural harvesting accelerates people coming to know Jesus as their Savior. It is speaking prophetically into somebody's life. We met a fortune teller in Turkey. She was very resistant to everything that we said. But the Lord spoke to one of the team members and said, You have been hurt by your mother. And no sooner had we said that than she began to break down and to weep and talk about her experience with her mother. We released healing into her life, and she came immediately to know Jesus as her Savior. We had a team out at one of our malls, and one of our team members heard God say, Take three steps backwards, turn around, and pray for the man that you will see standing right there. And he did exactly that and said to the man, I believe I'm supposed to pray for you. And that man said to him, you will not under any circumstances pray for me. But because there was an anointing upon my friend, he said to the man, I don't mind not praying for you, but I hate to leave you with so much pain in your right shoulder. And that man said to him, if you know that I'm in pain in my right shoulder, you may pray for me. And he did. His shoulder was healed, and he received Jesus as his Savior immediately. Supernatural harvesting is releasing words of knowledge. A team was in Turkey uh, visiting with people and meeting people on the streets. A man was very, very resistant to the gospel and to the message that was being presented. Then one of the team members said, You have a young daughter, don't you? And your daughter is struggling with these things and this and that. And the man said, yes, you are right. That is true. And his heart was broken down. We prayed for his daughter, and he received Jesus as his Savior. You see, it's setting somebody free from bondages and from demons. I was in a, another town in, in uh, Turkey, and, and a man came up to me in the meeting and said, I'm scared of you. I don't want to become a follower of Jesus. The next minute I knew, he was actually, he pounded the wall in the back of the room. He was really upset. As I continued to speak, the next thing I did, 
looked down and he was on his knees in the front of the group receiving Jesus as his Savior. It is the anointing that we carry by the Holy Spirit that causes green seed resistant men and women to immediately receive the message that we are carrying. It is anointing preaching that causes people to immediately receive the message. A lady in Western Turkey heard me speak. It was the very first time her husband was a follower of Jesus. She absolutely refused to come to the meetings. But because there was a foreigner, she came to hear the foreigner. And as I spoke about the lady whose heart was opened by Jesus, she goes by the name of Lydia. I just said to the group, who in this room right now has God just opened your heart to understand the message? And she stood up immediately. She received Jesus as her Savior. I was in another town, and three men had come as refugees from Afghanistan. And again, preaching a message on God opening people's hearts, I asked, whose heart has God opened right now to receive this message? These three men stood up, and they received Jesus as their Savior. Someone is listening to me right now, and your heart is opening in a way that you've never experienced before. Something inside of you is saying, that message rings in my heart. That message is true. The Holy Spirit is opening your heart to receive Jesus as your Savior. Would you receive Jesus right now? Ask him to come into your heart to forgive you for your sin. Thank him for dying for you in your place on the cross. And receive Jesus right now into your heart. Come Holy Spirit, fill this precious one with new understanding and new life who is listening to this message. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a few moments and pray over some things I believe God is talking to me about right now. Somebody has a back problem. It's an L4 or 5. You're in intense pain. I command your pain to go right now in Jesus' name. Just move around and move your back and see if your pain has left you. I believe it has. Write to me and tell me what God has just done for you. Uh, touch your mouth and your ears and your eyes. I say hear. I say see. I see say speak in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you're touching eyes and ears and mouths right now with your healing presence and power. Somebody has a back pain uh, in a different place. It's right between your shoulders and the middle of your shoulders. There's terrible pain right in there. And I just say pain go in Jesus' name. You're struggling with prostate cancer. Say, cancer, go. You've been diagnosed. I say, cancer, go in the name of Jesus. You have a child who's run away from home. Mother, you're terribly worried about your child. God sees your child and knows where your child is. And your child will return to you today. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing for people. Write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.